Hello everyone! If you've seen my previous video or if you follow the news, uh, you already know that Pragnananda has won his third Grandmaster Norm and uh, you, we already seen one game from this tournament, uh, but uh, I decided to show another one. This is a game from round 8 and this is basically his last game uh, as a non-Grandmaster chess player. So uh, it's a game uh, he played uh, against 17-year-old Italian Grandmaster uh, Luca Moroni and uh, it's also a very nice game and it's especially nice since it's played against a Grandmaster. So before we check it out, uh, I do have a nice photo challenge for you uh, in this video. Who are the two gentlemen here in this photo? And for some extra points, uh, which one of them is celebrating his 50th birthday? So uh, best of luck to everyone. Now let's uh, check out the game. Uh, Prago has the white pieces and he opens with e4. Uh, we have e5, knight to f3, knight to c6 and bishop to b5, the Ruy Lopez. And here we have knight to g to e7, the Cozio defense, something uh, not uh, not uh, seen that often uh, in high levels, uh, in high level chess. And it's also a very nice opportunity for Prago uh, to really, uh, you know, take advantage of this uh, of this peculiar idea. It's not a peculiar idea, it's just that it's if you're not used to it, yes, okay, maybe black can take advantage of this, but, uh, uh, you know, in books or if you, if you ever, you know, studied the, the Ruy Lopez uh, theory, you're not gonna, you're not gonna find any advice to actually play this move. Uh, but okay, uh, he is a grandmaster, so he can play it. Uh, we have c3, g6, uh, d4, e captures on d4, c captures on d4, uh, and bishop to g7. <clears throat> Uh, d5 attacking the knight on c6 and now knight to e5 immediately is perfectly fine but first a6. Uh, Prago goes back with the bishop, bishop to e2 and now knight to e5. We have knight captures, bishop captures and knight to c3. Uh, here uh, Luca plays d6. Uh, here okay maybe if you are very new to chess uh, maybe capturing the knight here does seem like a good idea to you uh, but uh, after b captures on c3 uh, black would simply have too, too many weaknesses uh, uh, regarding the dark squares. Uh, for example, if black decides to castle here, simply bishop to h6, attacking the rook, rook moves, and after queen d4, there is no defense uh, against queen to g7 checkmate. Uh, black can stop it, but uh, black would lose uh, so much material here that it would be, well, pretty much like resigning. So, uh, just putting that out there. Uh, so, instead d6, uh, we have castles, uh, c5 now, and c5 would be a very nice uh, pawn structure here. Uh, for black, if uh, Prago decided to do nothing about this, then b4, b5 could come b4. Uh, so Prago captures at Ampasan. We have d captures on c6, b captures on c6, and now bishop to h6. And now you can see that uh, even though uh, black has a dark square bishop, uh, white managed to play bishop to h6 and prevent black from castling. And here we have another move that, uh, well, it seemed pretty awkward to me, d5. Now, if you've ever read any chess book about chess principles or something like this, if you have, if uh, if a player stopped your king from castling, <laughs> you'll you'll always see the advice: uh, don't open the center. But it's very interesting to me that d5 is actually the the strongest move recommended by the engine. Luca Moroni plays it, and uh, you know, in in the in this modern uh, <laughs> era of engines, uh, you know, it uh, it's obviously okay to break principles. But okay, queen to d3, we have bishop to e6, and now f4, attacking the bishop. Uh, queen to b6, this comes with check, you have to move the king, king h1, <clears throat> and d captures on e4. Uh, knight captures on e4, and now first uh, an in-between move to develop the rook, rook to d8. Uh, queen to a3, and now the bishop has to move. The bishop doesn't have all that many good squares. Uh, you can't go to g7, bishop is guarding it. You can't go to f6, knight is guarding it. You can't go to d6, uh, both knight and queen are guarding it. So, bishop to d4 is played, and now comes the bishop to g5. And this is a beautiful move by Pragnananda. Uh, the threat, of course, is the immediate queen captures uh, on e7. This would be checkmate. And it's uh, not all that easy to prevent this. For example, uh, you can't move the knight because you lose the rook here. If you play rook here, then, it's again, it's not all that easy. Uh, bishop to f6 simply uh, wins the game pretty much immediately. If you capture it, bishop captures, then knight captures and you lose the rook. And even if you don't capture it after bishop to f6, even if you move the rook, rook to g8, uh, then first rook a to d1, so now the threat is capturing the bishop on d4, uh, and after queen moves, then bishop captures. Rook captures, and now knight to f6, again pinning, uh, forking the king and the rook on g8. 
uh, king moves and now after a couple of captures now the knight cannot capture as it's pinned uh, from the queen on a3 so after king captures queen captures and uh, white would be up a whole rook so it's not all that easy to defend this position here c5 is played uh, we have knight to f6 check and now bishop captures on f6 you have to give up the bishop pair and you no longer have any grip uh, over the dark squares uh, you cannot uh, you know just disregard this play king here as the bishop to h6 would be checkmate now so you do have to capture it bishop captures on f6 we have bishop captures on f6 and rook to g8 now uh rook a to d1 bringing uh, the last rook into the attack and uh, again black doesn't really have have all that much to do here uh rook captures rook captures and knight to d5 now uh hoping to get the knight into the game also attacking the bishop on f6 uh, bishop moves and now king to f8 uh, breaking the pin uh, we have bishop to f3 now with a double attack on the knight and queen b5 now uh, bishop captures on d5 bishop captures and now queen to e3 uh, of course you cannot capture the bishop if you capture it queen to f1 will be checkmate uh, so queen to e3 instead uh, going for that very nice e7 square uh, we have g5 now uh first uh, trying to open the g file we have bishop captures and now queen to c6 now with a very nice attack against the g2 pawn and maybe in the future uh, black could take advantage of, of the rook and, and the semi-open g file uh, but it's uh, not gonna happen queen to e7 played by prago uh, we have king to g7 and now queen to e5 check f6 and now queen captures on d5 uh, queen, cap queen to e7 check is also playable, but <clears throat> uh, Prago evaluates the position very precisely, and he, he sees that queen captures on d5 is uh, simply crushing. Uh, so queen captures, we have rook captures, now a white is up a piece, black has to capture the bishop, uh, bishop cap uh, pawn captures bishop on g5, and now we have rook captures on g5 with check. Uh, this is the last move uh, that was played in the game, uh, hence the title, Prago's last move as a non-grandmaster, and here uh, Italian grandmaster Luca Moroni uh, resigned the game. Uh, why did he resign? Uh, While well, the king is in check, the king has to move, after king moves you can simply grab the rook, and now it's uh, five pawns uh, against three and uh, such a king and pawn endgame is uh, always winning well all <laughs> most of the times but here it's definitely winning uh, as uh, what prago does have two extra pawns uh so after this uh rook captures on g5 luca moroni resigned the game and uh, prago uh, achieved his third grandmaster norm and uh, thus uh, you know became a grandmaster so yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. And if you haven't checked by any chance my previous video, I will just uh, show it uh, once more. Uh, here is now the list of the youngest grandmasters in history. Uh, first is still Sergei Karakin uh, because he became grandmaster at 12 years and 7 months. Uh, then second is uh, Pragnananda with 12 years and 10 months. So two of them are, are the only uh, two chess players to achieve the rank of grandmaster uh, before reaching age 13. Then we have Nodirbek uh, Abudu Satorov from Uzbekistan, uh, Parimarya Negi from India and Magnus Carlsen from Norway in 5th place with 13 years and 4 months. So yeah, that's, those are the standings now and uh, we also have, as I've shown in the previous video, uh, a nice a congratulations uh, tweet uh, from Vishwanathan Anand himself. So yeah. Uh, that's the game. Uh, once again, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Danny McCullough for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Uh, one of them will be uh, another game played by Prago from this tournament. So if you, ha if you haven't, feel free to check it out. Uh, thank you all for watching and uh, I will see you soon, hopefully with another interesting video.